Hello everyone, welcome back to the start of my Calibros channel. This is video number three of the series title, How the Air Conditioning System Works. If the previous two videos that I uploaded related to the subject seem a little bit confusing, when I explain to you how the system works and how it all ties together, the other two videos will start to make sense. So let's get this camera up close so we can get started. Okay, so before I start explaining the operation of the system, let's go over the components. You got an AC compressor, then you have an AC condenser, this part is mounted in the front of the radiator, the front of the vehicle. Some manufacturers might put an inline filter on the liquid line. And there's an orifice tube. Then you have the evaporator that's inside the car. And there's an accumulator. Now this is one system. And with a pencil, I wrote two components of an entirely different system. Depending on the make of the vehicle, it could have either or. The remaining components will be pretty much the same but the other system will have an expansion valve instead of an orifice tube and instead of an accumulator is going to have a receiver dryer so if you notice the two systems the accumulator is on the low side you'll see what that means in a second versus the receiver dryer being on the high pressure liquid line and the expansion valve is going to be closer to the evaporator so if you see an expansion valve your vehicle is going to have a receiver dryer most likely and if it has an orifice tube it's going to have an accumulator so now that we know the components, let's go over the operation. So the AC compressor is driven by the serpentine belt or a V-belt if your vehicle is older. And here there is an AC clutch that is engaged every time you turn the air conditioning on inside your car. As the pistons start moving inside the compressor, the flow begins. And the refrigerant gets compressed. And as it gets compressed, it becomes really hot. Hotter than the ambient temperature. As it flows through the condenser, it gives up heat because it's hotter than the ambient temperature. It's going to give out a lot of that heat. But as it does, it changes from a highly compressed gas to a liquid. And that's why this line is called the liquid line. Then it continues to flow. And if it has a filter, then it'll pass through the filter. Then it's right here at the orifice tube that the pressure drops. So the refrigerant is going to change from a very high pressure liquid to a low pressure liquid. Now when the pressure drops, it starts expanding because it's under a low pressure now. But it's still in liquid form. So as it arrives to the evaporator, since the refrigerant is a lot colder than the temperature inside the vehicle, it starts absorbing the heat. And as it does, it starts boiling. And as it boils, it absorbs more heat. Remember the latent heat principle? That when a substance starts boiling, it can soak up a lot more heat. And then if you still have a question like, how can the refrigerant be boiling if the temperature of my car is like 80 degrees? Well, don't forget that the 134A, its boiling point is minus 15.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So even if your temperature inside your car is 50 degrees, you have a boiling refrigerant that is soaking up heat. And this line right here, if you touch it, it's still going to feel cold to the touch. You know, it could be anywhere 5 degrees, 10 degrees, very, very cold to the touch, but the refrigerant is boiling. So right now we have a low pressure gas that if you have this system, it passes through the accumulator and it gets sucked in by the compressor because it's operating. So this is your suction line and the process will start all over again. So this refrigerant is constantly being reused. So two very completely different scenarios. Here the refrigerant is absorbing the heat that is inside the car and is carrying it. And over here is removing the heat because the compressed gas got so hot that it was easier for the heat to follow the ambient temperature even if we're talking 80, 90, even 100 degrees. You live in the desert, it could be 110 degrees and still the heat is going to follow because this gas was compressed and it was so much hotter. And this ties into the principle that a refrigerant must absorb heat in order to change from a liquid to gas. Just like boiling water, that's why I keep bringing that example. So by now the explanation of what's in this drawing should enable you to understand your air conditioning system and how the heat of your car was absorbed by the refrigerant at the evaporator and it was released at the AC condenser. So there you go. Now you understand how the air conditioning system in your vehicle works. On upcoming videos I'm going to explain how to troubleshoot problems and now that you understand how everything ties together, 
it's going to be easy to do the diagnostics versus before that you probably didn't know how it all worked. So stay tuned for those videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.